Are you pregnant and having high blood pressure or have a history of high blood pressure and wondering about what is preeclampsia and why is everyone talking about it? I'm gonna be breaking down what is preeclampsia in this video. Welcome to the Mama Stay Fit YouTube channel. I'm Roxanne, I'm a labor and delivery nurse and student midwife, and I'm gonna be talking all about preeclampsia or high blood pressure during pregnancy. There are three main types of high blood pressure during pregnancy. One, chronic hypertension. So this is high blood pressure that occurred before 20 weeks and either could be newly diagnosed during that first 20 weeks pregnancy or pre-existing. So you had high blood pressure coming in. The next one would be gestational hypertension. So this is high blood pressure that develops after 20 weeks and specifically a blood pressure greater than 140 over 90. But with that, you, if you have one, not a big deal. The big deal is when you've had two elevated blood pressures and they have to have occurred greater than four hours apart. If like you had one at your 28 week appointment and then again at your 32 week appointment, you also had an elevated blood pressure, this is when you would be considered having gestational hypertension. But that is the only thing that's present with gestational hypertension is that elevated blood pressure. The last option is preeclampsia. So preeclampsia is that elevated blood pressure of either 140 over 90 along with what's called protein urea. So this is protein, elevated protein within our urine. This is not ideal. So if you have either that 140 over 90 with protein urea, this is what we would consider preeclampsia. This one is a little bit more serious because with preeclampsia, other than gestational hypertension, this is when we have like actual organ damage occurring and like some, like your body itself is being like responding to that elevated blood pressure and it could lead to some un, like negative side effects. So risks that we're having with preeclampsia that we're worried about is one, that organ damage is going to occur. Another one would be having a stroke because elevated blood pressure could lead to having a stroke. And then the last one, which is also concerning for baby, is having preterm birth. It is believed that preeclampsia does start at the beginning of pregnancy, like the seeds of preeclampsia starts because it's related to the placenta and the way that the placenta attaches into the uterus. Sometimes though, the symptoms occur out of nowhere. Or you could have like not really any symptoms, but be very, very sick with preeclampsia. Just knowing that there's nothing that you did to cause this is really important. Sometimes it just happens, unfortunately, even to people who have zero risk factors. But there is some people who are at an increased risk of developing preeclampsia. And what are those people? So if you're over the age of 35, of course, always over 35, but also less than 18. So teen pregnancies are at an increased risk of this as well. It's also your first pregnancy. So first pregnancy with a new partner as well. So even if you've had two pregnancies and now you have a new partner and have a pregnancy with them, that increases your risk of potentially developing preeclampsia as well. If you have a history of blood pressure issues, so you have that chronic hypertension, this increases your risk, as well as a history of preeclampsia with previous pregnancies also increases your risk of preeclampsia again. So once you have it, you have an increased risk of getting it again, unfortunately. And then the last risk factor is a BMI greater than 25. So that population is at an increased risk of preeclampsia, but you could have none of those risk factors and still potentially develop it. The full like process of why preeclampsia happens and like what exactly is happening during the entire thing is not fully understood, but we do know that it can have a lot of long-term complications associated with it for your pregnancy and like postpartum. So knowing and identifying preeclampsia can be really beneficial. So how do we monitor it? Obviously every prenatal visit, we're gonna be taking your blood pressure. And if you have an elevated blood pressure, that's when they're going to then look into further to make sure that you don't have preeclampsia. And maybe you just have gestational hypertension. So they're gonna do a urine check. So they're gonna either do a spot urine to see how much protein is in that urine, or they're gonna do what's called a 24 hour urine. This is when you're gonna collect your pee in a jug for 24 hours, and then they're gonna again test that protein in that urine. And then depending on the level, you would then rule in for preeclampsia depending on how much protein was either in the spot urine or the 24 hour urine. 
And then they're also going to do some blood tests as well to monitor your blood levels to see how is your liver being affected because our preeclampsia could affect our liver. It could affect our kidneys. So we're looking at all of these other organs to see how they're doing to see if that preeclampsia is affecting our end organs as well. If you start displaying symptoms of preeclampsia other than high blood pressure, this is when it would kind of then progress from preeclampsia or even chronic hypertension to preeclampsia with severe features. So the severe features is when more of those organs are being involved. So this is when your liver enzymes are elevated. It's because your liver is being effective, as well as you might have right upper quadrant abdomen pain. So the upper part where your liver is located is going to start hurting. And it's almost like deep underneath those ribs, usually where again, the liver is located. You might also start having a headache because like the blood vessels within your head is being affected. So a headache that's unrelieved with any sort of medication. So you take Tylenol, nothing touches it. This is a headache that is concerning to us. Any visual changes, so either spots in your vision or it feels like the tunnel, like the sides of your peripherals is like caving in, any changes within your vision. If you normally have blurry vision without your glasses, that is not a change. So a change in your vision, blurry vision, spots in your vision, or the walls are caving in, that is concerning for us. As well as if you notice one day you're not swollen and then the next day you are super swollen where you touch your leg and it's like pitting, like you press into your feet and it's like, it leaves that indentation suddenly, or even just like a little bit of swelling, but like one day you are fine. And then all of a sudden you have a, a ton of swelling, sudden weight gain from that swelling. That would be another concerning feature that we would look for. Or you could have none of those things, but your blood pressure is no longer 140 over 90. Now it's 160 over 100. So if we see any of those things with preeclampsia, that's when it would become preeclampsia with severe features, or you could have had that chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. So now your chronic hypertension has progressed still to that preeclampsia. So now your like, whole body is being involved. So we would want to then treat this. And depending on your gestation age of when this occurred, our treatment would kind of be different. And this is when it definitely becomes a conversation with your provider. But normally the treatment choice is magnesium. So one of the things with preeclampsia that we're trying to prevent other than like high blood pressure just in general and like the long-term damages to organs from preeclampsia is what's called eclampsia. So this is preeclampsia and we're preventing eclampsia. Eclampsia is a full-blown tonic-clonic seizure that can develop during pregnancy or occur. And previously, like people would die from eclampsias before treatments existed when they occur because like we didn't see the signs or like we wouldn't respond to the signs of preeclampsia and then these people would then have a seizure. So we don't see that very often anymore because we know preeclampsia and we need to respond to it. So one of the treatments is magnesium to treat for at least 24 hours. Magnesium is given IV. If you've ever like, you know, used magnesium, it's, it makes you sleepy. So similarly, we're giving you a ton of magnesium to kind of relax the muscles and nerve response, as well as makes you kind of feel like you have the flu and not feel great. But this is to decrease the likelihood of having a seizure. So it decreases that seizure threshold so that you are less likely to have an eclamptic seizure. So this is a great, great treatment to kind of save people. Side effect is it also usually lowers people's blood pressure. So that's a benefit of also magnesium. But the main focus is the prevention of the seizures. So we give them magnesium to prevent the seizures from coming. And then this becomes a conversation of whether we move to birth or we continue to kind of monitor baby and see if we can continue to stay pregnant, depending on the severity. Normally, if there's nothing crazy going on, the recommendation for preeclampsia or gestational hypertension is an induction of labor at 37 weeks. Um, depending on, again, the severity, that might happen earlier on in the pregnancy. If you have a history of C-sections, they may recommend a C-section versus a TOLAC or a trial of labor. Um, or if you're wanting that VBAC, um, they may still induce depending on the severity. So this, again, becomes a conversation with your provider on preeclampsia management, whether or not they move to delivery, induce, or move to a C-section becomes that, again, conversation. It is still a decision that you get to make based off of the presentation of your illness, as well as what you want for your birth. 
Preeclampsia can occur during pregnancy. It can even pop up during labor. Um, so you could have had no symptoms and then all of a sudden during labor, now you're starting to show more symptoms of preeclampsia. It could also happen in the postpartum. So different times, still want to respond to it in the same way. So if you are in labor and you start developing or displaying signs of preeclampsia, this is when we would start again that magnesium. And even in the postpartum, if you were at home and you had a headache that did not go away with any sort of Tylenol, we would also want to assess you and then potentially treat that hypertension or preeclampsia that developed during the postpartum period. It can happen like as late as six weeks postpartum. So being mindful also, not just during pregnancy, but also during that postpartum period. So just to recap, what is preeclampsia during pregnancy? So this is high, elevated blood pressure is greater than 140 over 90, at least two separate times. It's still the same criteria of gestational hypertension. So two separate times greater than four hours apart. So usually two separate prenatal visits. And then it also has protein in your urine. So you have like elevated protein within your urine. That is the diagnostic criteria for preeclampsia during pregnancy. But you could have severe features where now your organs are being involved, such as right upper quadrant pain, a headache, a blurry vision, um, sudden weight gain from swelling within our bodies. Um, and then your labs could also be elevated. So things that with the labs that we're looking for are your liver enzymes, your platelets, and then some other labs that we would look at. Those tell us whether or not the organs are now also being involved. With that criteria of preeclampsia or preeclampsia with severe features, then the management of that becomes we give IV magnesium to decrease the likelihood of your preeclampsia turning into eclampsia, which is again that full body seizure, as well as deciding when to move towards delivery, whether again it's that induction, waiting a little bit longer, or moving towards a C-section depending on the severity of the preeclampsia. This is not a super common occurrence that can happen, but it can occur during pregnancy, birth, or even postpartum, so it's still very important. Hypertension during pregnancy is a still a very important condition that we should all be educated on to be able to see the signs and symptoms in our bodies, to be able to treat for them before they become more serious to help save lives. So if you had either gestational hypertension or preeclampsia during your pregnancy, let us know your experience down in the comments below. We would love to hear them. And if there's a topic that you're wanting to learn more about during pregnancy, postpartum, birth, preconception, literally any topic of women's health, uh, let us know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make a video on that. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we release new videos. We release like one to two videos a week, education and fitness, so we would love to have you subscribe. And if you're looking for more support because you're pregnant or postpartum, check out our online education courses or our fitness programs. We have an online childbirth education course which discusses the science of labor and birth and breaks down that mystery so you know how to move throughout labor and pregnancy pain-free as well as how to support and advocate for yourself during labor and birth. We also have a prenatal fitness that pairs with our childbirth education really greatly. The prenatal fitness syncs to your trimester or the exact week of your pregnancy, and it's designed to help prepare your body for birth, but also have a pain-free pregnancy. Our postpartum education course helps prepare you for what to expect in the postpartum period because postpartum is a lot longer than childbirth and labor and it can last and have a lot of surprises in there. So kind of knowing what to expect can be helpful. You can also pair that with our postpartum fitness courses, which help help your body recover and return to the sport that you normally enjoyed, such as running or Olympic weightlifting or general strength training, because all of those things can be something that we can still do after having babies. And as a thank you for listening to this entire video, you can use code YouTube10 to get 10% off any of our courses that we offer.